Hello, and welcome to Kevin's Corner TV. My name is Kevin Corden, and I'm the editor of the Gold Coast Gazette, a weekly newspaper established in 1991 along with my mother. The newspaper covers the North Shore of Long Island, and over the years I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of interesting people. Through this show, I hope to introduce you to some of those people. I hope you enjoy it. Today I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Michael Gaeta. Doctor? Thank you for being on the show. This is great. Thank you, Kevin. Good to be here. Now, doctor, tell me your um, holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. Tell me about holistic medicine. What is that all about? Yeah, holistic medicine is a, is a way of looking at a person, not as isolated symptoms or isolated parts of the body, but looking at their whole, not just their whole physical form, their whole physical being, but also the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of who they are and encouraging a sense of not just absence of symptoms, but the presence of uh, vitality, well-being, um, resilience, and inner peace. Hmm. Now, how does that differ from uh, an MD? Well, conventional medicine is based in the other, the other approach to medicine, which is reductionism. You have holism, which we talked about, and reductionism generally aims to isolate and separate individual components and parts of a person and individual symptoms but not necessarily look at the whole person or the causes in the lifestyle in the diet in their mental emotional state in their relationships that might actually be causing the sim causing the illness causing the symptoms so holism is mostly uh, interested in promoting health and wellness and looking at causes Whereas reductionism, or MD, conventional medicine, is mostly aimed at suppressing symptoms mm -hmm. without looking at causes and using poisons to do so, which are the, the drugs, which have their place, mm -hmm. but they're just overused. You know, like in this country, Kevin, we have 5% of the world's population, but we consume 50% of the world's pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. with only 5% of the world's population. So again, I'm not against drugs. They have their place. They're just overused. And uh, our motto here in, the, in our clinic is nature first and drugs last. Well, like say, yeah. say our child has a fever. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you treat that? Well, a fever uh, is, like any symptom, is a sign uh, of something working out in the body that needs attention. And a fever in a child almost always is related to or even directly caused by a calcium deficiency. If there's insufficient calcium to fight the infection or vitamin C complex to fight the infection, then the body will use the backup mechanism, which is a fever, to raise uh, the activity of the immune system to fight the infection. Optimally, we can fight an infection without raising a high fever, particularly in a child, if there's adequate calcium and adequate uh, vitamin C complex. So it's funny, there's, there was uh, some time ago, as an example, I, w I got a, a frenzied call from a, a patient who's a mom. I also treated her, her children. And uh, the child had a high fever for a number of days and uh, was really not getting any better. The lips were very red, tongue was very red, high fever, sweating, restless. And, and usually sleeping. it's like Moltrin, Tylenol, Moltrin, Tylenol. Right, exactly. usual cause, So right? the, the typical, they all suppress the fever. Suppress right. the fever is the worst yeah. thing you can do because the fever is part of the healing mechanism. Uh, and there's no, really never a need to suppress a fever unless it's extraordinarily high. Mm -hmm. And 99% of the time, a child's body will not allow a fever to go above, say, 105, where it can actually do damage. And you know, a child can have convulsions or other neurological you know, complications. The body generally won't let that happen. So unless you're in that territory, you never suppress a fever. So, you know, what did we do? We gave the child calcium, and right away, jim, jim, calcium supplementation mm -hmm. in the form of calcium lactate. And that wasn't getting rid of the fever, yeah. that was curing whatever it didn't was. didn't get rid of the fever, it got right. rid of the cause of the fever, right. which is a calcium deficiency. And it's interesting that the, the whites of the child's teeth were going away. Mm. In other words, the body was grabbing calcium from wherever it could to mm. fight this infection, and actually pulled it out of the teeth. So within a week, the white returned to the child's teeth once we added supplemental calcium lactate. Wow, wow. It's very simple. Kids yeah. are easy to treat. Yeah. yeah. Now, how young do you treat kids? Oh, you know, weeks old. Really? Yeah, sure. Really, sure, really? Sure. And is there a lot of things to do with diet, uh, Americans' diet? Yeah, I mean, that's the, that is the cause of most 
uh, illness, uh, or at least a one of the causes of most illness in this country. What's happening in, in, in this country is people are starving. They're malnourished. Mm. They're suffering from malnutrition, from eating processed, refined foods, genetically modified foods, and other non-foods. Uh, and they develop symptoms of disease, heart disease, mm. diabetes, arthritis, cancer, essentially nutritional deficiency diseases, at least in part. And what do we do? We have a symptom. We suppress the symptom with a drug, all the while ignoring the cause of the problem, which is oftentimes uh, starvation, nutritional deficiency. And we suffer from, I guess, overconsumptive malnutrition. We eat too much, but we're starving. Uh, and, and so we correct that with a whole foods diet, minimally processed, unrefined foods, and supplements that are also made of food. So food and plant-based supplements to complement the foundation, which is the diet. Mm. So are we talking mainly a vegetable diet or? Well, the, the, the human body is, we're, we're built to be omnivores. Mm -hmm. So we're designed to digest and eat everything. So we're supposed to be eating a diet of primarily locally produced foods, what's indigenous to our region, uh, that is very plant strong and animal strong. So both animal foods and vegetable foods combine together with a minimum of refined carbohydrates and white flour and white rice and white sugar and corn syrup and all these other, you know, the, the American diet is extremely high in carbohydrate and sugar and, and massively deficient in quality protein and fat. Right, right, wow. Okay, good. Now tell me a little bit about the acupuncture. <laughs> yeah, no now this is one of your patients and is receiving acupuncture. Yes, she just um, uh, is uh, with her acupuncture needles. This is Laura. Laura, thank and, you for uh, being on the show. <laughs> a a long-time Long Island resident. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, she, I've been working with Laura for several years. And, uh, and she's come a really long way. And this is an acupuncture treatment that we're just completing now. And uh, she's in the happy, peaceful acupuncture mm -hmm. zone. And um, yeah. now does that hurt? No. no. You okay? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Now, what, what, do you, what do you feel? You feel anything? Relax. Relax. Mm. Cool, cool. So what, what does the acupuncture do for her and other yeah. patients? Acu the aim of acupuncture is to, uh, in simple terms, is to activate the body's own healing resources, to um, uh, increase the, the life force in the body, which then does the healing where it's needed. Mm. The primary aim of acupuncture in Chinese medicine is to increase the presence of life and health, which then crowds out the illness, which might be there. So it's not primarily about treating illness, it's more about prevention and health maintenance and well-being, as well as, you know, personal growth and development as well. Right. So. Right. Well, very cool. Now, what is the history of acupuncture? Well, acupuncture goes back to ancient China, mm -hmm. many thousands of years where uh, very highly developed folks um, who were, you know, had a, a high degree of self-awareness um, were actually able to sense the movement and flow of energy, very subtle life energy, moving through the body in specific pathways. And then uh, were able to develop a system where we could use the, the doorways, so these are, these are each individual doorways into the energy system of the body. And so by uh, activating these doorways, could be with a needle, could be with a hand. So, you know, if I was doing, you know, some type of body work, um, you know, we may, this is AMA therapy, which is the type of body work that I do. And then I might, you know, locate and, and activate this doorway uh, with my fingers. That's another way to do it. Pressure points and stuff. Pressure right. points is as, right. often, as it's often described. And each of these doorways has a specific beneficial effect, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, and so that's the, the idea is to use the specific doorways that would be most helpful to that person mm -hmm. to activate their healing resources. And so you know we use these you know pathways and the access points, these doorways, to do that with acupuncture. Right. Well, you know, oftentimes we'll begin, you know, just to get a sense of what's happening. Excuse me, got my back to you, but we check the pulses, 
And this gives us a read of the energy system, of what's happening in the organs with the vital energy and the blood. And, uh, and so there are uh, six pulse positions, and each pulse position has different levels to it. So it gets pretty detailed, right. where you have you know, at least 12 different pulse positions uh, that we're reading um, in a pulse diagnosis. And then we'll look at the tongue and get a sense of the tongue, and that looks pretty good. A little bit of uh, uh, tooth marks on the edges and a little puffy, but overall pretty good. That would indicate like a spleen um, uh, deficiency, uh, which is the digestive energy being a little bit weak, causing an accumulation of uh, fluids that causes the tongue to swell mm. and push against the teeth and cause those little bit of teeth marks. So partly because of that, we did uh, something of a digestive treatment here. This, these points in the center, this is the conception vessel, uh, 6 and 12. Uh, so um, uh, these are, uh, so this is a Qihai and um, Zongluan. Those are the Chinese names for these points. And then a stomach point here, uh, heavenly pivot, or Tian Shu. And then we have uh, liver 13. So this is a liver point. What showed up in her pulses was an imbalance between the liver and the spleen. The other function of these belly points is as what we call a whole body root treatment, which is a whole, whole system building, nourishing, strengthening uh, thing that I'll often start with before doing more specific work based on what we find in the pulse, the tongue, and the abdomen, as well as just what they, what they report. Right, right. Yeah. And then uh, this here in the forehead is uh, yin tang, uh, seal hall is the translation. And this tends to have a very calming effect on the mind, just to relax and calm the mind and the emotions. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, a little bit of what we were looking to do today. Laura's right. come a really long way uh, and has made, you know, tremendous gains in her health, her lifestyle. She's, you you she's, see the difference? You really do? Yourself? Yes. Yeah. Now. Not only is she a healthier, stronger, more resilient, peaceful person, but now she's more of a positive influence on others mm. and is actually becoming a therapist herself. She stu she's studying to be a massage therapist and is going to be an incredible therapist, oh. uh, largely because of the changes that she's made. That's the whole thing of holism is uh, personal responsibility, which Laura has totally taken on. In her yeah, own. Uh, ninety percent of people's health is actually in the mind, correct? Well, the body only responds to the mind, okay. and the body also needs nourishment to function. So the mental factors, the nutritional factors, are very significant. Mm -hmm. So the mental, emotional, and nutritional factors are are very, very primary um, in terms of not only treating illness but also building health and resilience. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the, the goal is not just symptom-free, the goal is fully alive right. and being as much in service to others in, in one's life as you can. Mm, that's yeah. a nice message. Right? Yeah, I mean, as, as, I, as I explained to Laura in like one of her first visits, the reason I do this work is not just for the patient's benefit alone, but so that they can be a more positive presence or a greater blessing to the people in their life. Mm. In other words, because Laura has changed, she's healed, she's done deep in her work, uh, made significant lifestyle changes, really cleaned up a lot of aspects of her lifestyle that weren't helping her, um, and is seeing the results of that, you know, more energy, weight loss, you know, a lot of beneficial things. Now she can be a more positive influence on those in her life. And that's where it's exciting for me, is that I'm not just treating the person, I'm treating through the person mm -hmm. into the people in their life. And that's really what kind of gets me out of bed in the morning and into the clinic and you know doing my best to help people make real lasting deep change because then they will become more alive activated people who are then a greater service and blessing and positive helpful presence to others. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Laura was the one who got the acupuncture. Yeah. How was it? Good? It was good. I feel relaxed. I feel whole. I feel centered, grounded. Um, just Going back out into the world. Excellent, excellent. Now, you're following the dietary regimen? Yes, I am. What is that? Is that vegetables? Is that non-processed food? I basically eat pro uh, non-processed foods. Mm -hmm. I cook what I eat. Um, I happen to live out east on Long Island, so we were lucky enough to have a lot of local farms and organic farms and things like that. 
um, this time of year are moving into squashes and soups and um, things like that. But we just came out of fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And um, I guess as the winter comes, it's going to be heavier. Yeah. yeah you you know, more root vegetables. The more root more vegetables soups, and things. Foods, yeah. So yeah. when oh, did I you switch on the? When did you switch that over? I actually switched over in August. Oh, okay. And my life has changed so, so fast. much since. So I, fast. Oh gosh, my blood pressures went down. I've lost. Uh, um, 28 pounds. You know, 28 pounds. 28 wow. pounds. Um, mm -hmm. I have more energy. Energy levels up. Wow. Yep, I'm in school for massage therapy. Right. So I'm um, giving yeah. massages, the energy I have, to, you know, for that and helping other people. Right. And um, just a sense of, of um, healing, mm. not necessarily curing. Right. Because you can heal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have a healing without a Absolutely. cure, per se. Right. Absolutely. Um, right. You know, and just every day. Just, right. You know. It's just been amazing, cool. really amazing, actually. Cool. And one cool. thing I would mention yeah. is a, a big catalyst for Laura's change was doing a purification program, mm -hmm. which is a three-week cleanse that helps a person reset their diet. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. practicing how to eat clean for three weeks, which is enough time to begin to set a new dietary habit. So I often, you know, I recommend the patients do a cleanse, a three-week guided cleanse once a year, sometimes twice a year as a reset for their diet, as well as a clearing of toxins and a time to do transformational work. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, and at this time, I have no urges for anything, processed chip, or any of the stuff I mm. used to eat. No, really, huh? No, wow. no. Wow. And I go into places and I see the stuff and I just think, I don't smoke. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. It's like I'm putting a cigarette in. I just, yeah. I don't smoke. But yeah. it's just, sure. you know, oh, cool. so... Good. Well, congratulations. Well, thank Continue you very good much. Health. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Thank you. All right, so tell me a little bit about the history of Eastern medicine. Yeah. Uh, Chinese medicine is, well, Eastern medicine would, could, we, we usually think of East Asian medicine as rooted in China and then spread from China to Japan, Korea, other areas. Um, but uh, what we refer to as Chinese medicine is a very ancient healing technique that was based, uh, really a system of medicine that was primarily aimed at preventing illness, promoting health and growth. Mm -hmm. So that uh, a person could, you know, be of greater service in their communities and uh, what have you. So it's primarily a, a preventative and life quality approach, not primarily treating disease. That's considered inferior medicine. This is, we have a saying in Chinese medicine, if you uh, are treating disease after it's manifest is like starting to dig a well after you've become thirsty mm. in other words it's a little late right so the whole you know what we say the superior physician uh, doesn't treat disease so much as prevent disease which is very you know kind of not glamorous because it's very impressive to treat the disease and it goes away that sounds very impressive right. but it's considered inferior to the less glamorous work of keeping people well so they don't get sick. So a lot of my job is to help people stay out of the medical system, which is based on treating disease, uh, so that they, they are uh, less likely to suffer from the consequences of excessive drug therapy, excessive other kind of conventional treatments. Uh, by staying well, learning how to take care of themselves, knowing how to find the early signs of an imbalance and make corrections could be a simple thing. You know, bundle up, uh, drink some soup, uh, take a, a food supplement, uh, something simple so that, it doesn't, so that the, the problem doesn't progress to the point where it's a real major crisis situation where they got to go to the hospital and get drugs and surgery and, and all these very expensive, high-tech stuff, which is you know, unnecessary mm. if you work upstream more at the cause, uh, which has to do with the thoughts, feelings, lifestyle, and diet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Chinese medicine is an approach based on that and based on the idea that uh, people have, that there's a life force in us that if it's flowing and strong, results in a sense of well-being. And uh, when it's weak or stuck, then you have more of a, a, a problem. That's you know, where the symptoms can come in. Right. And so it includes acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine. So here's an example, some examples of raw Chinese herbs. Um, and so this herb, uh, in for, uh, for instance, is a cold herb, 
which is kind of calming to a person who might be irritable. Mm. Uh, this herb here is a tonic, uh, strengthening uh, herb. It's actually a mantis egg case, so uh, the uh, egg case of a, a mantis. And uh, this is a, a strengthening, building, nourishing herb to strengthen the what we call the kidney energy in Chinese medicine. And uh, this herb over here, uh, Chuan Xin Lian, is a very famous uh, cooling herb for, we might say, infections mm -hmm. or fever or uh, other heat-related conditions. So we have a, a, a clearing herb, a tonic herb, and uh, also something of a, of a cooling herb that's used frequently when there's uh, an, you know, a, a cold or flu, something like that. Right. Uh, so these are examples of Chinese herbs. So we talked about acupuncture, which we, which we saw, right. uh, Chinese herbs, diet, um, exercise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, have, you know, we have Tai Chi and the different uh, e e Eastern uh, movement arts, the, uh, and uh, it's very useful. Uh, and um, so those are kind of, and body work, uh, Asian body work therapy. So those are some of the main tools, uh, acupuncture, herbs, diet, body work, um, uh, lifestyle, and exercise some of the primary tools used in Chinese medicine to promote health as well as, when necessary, uh, treat a disease. Right, right. Now, do you have patients who come in who have had the disease and seek your help? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the most common patient to come in has been through Western medicine, not been helped, taking various medications, seen various specialists, never gotten to the root of the issue, still don't feel well, they may have had their symptoms suppressed. Their, di their blood sugar is down with a drug. Mm -hmm. Their blood pressure is down with a drug. Their thyroid is being propped up with a synthetic drug. But nobody's actually getting to the underlying issue, and they don't feel well. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still lethargic, tired, achy, not really feeling vital and fully alive. Uh, but really, the main aim is to, okay, if there's a thyroid problem, let's address the cause of that and help the thyroid heal itself. If the blood pressure is elevated, well, why? Maybe there's an issue in the liver, maybe in the kidneys, maybe in the diet that's, that's causing that. Um, if they um, you know, have uh, diabetes, okay, what is it in there? They're eating too much carbohydrate, too much sugar, not enough quality fat, not enough quality protein. Uh, let's fix the dietary pattern that led to the diabetes, you know, things like that. And then we aim always for drug-free. Mm -hmm. uh, I always recommend a patient, you know, and again, the way holistic medicine works is, I suggest you decide. Mm. You know, the, the, it's always the patient's responsibility. I make suggestions. I'm a guide, an advisor. This is what I think you should do and why, but it's your choice. Um, and know. so my job is to aim for drug-free, because drugs don't treat anything. They're just poisons that suppress symptoms uh, and never address causes. And then, as a person is getting better and stronger and more alive, and they just find they need less drugs, and then they get as close to drug-free as they can. Hmm. Now, Western medicine is the only real medicine that treats everything with drugs and all this stuff? And well, you also? know, it wasn't always that way, but yes, the way it's practiced today, Western medicine is a, is a crisis-based system, which has its place. I'm not against Western medicine at all. Right. It's unparalleled for crisis care, trauma care, and life-saving intervention. It's unparalleled. I mean, mm. It's the best. You know, my job is to prevent all that stuff from happening. Mm. So the person doesn't get to the point where either the ER and the ambulance and the drugs and the surgery and the chemotherapy and the radiation, they don't need any of that because they're staying well. And I need to do some work to get them to that place. But once they're there, it's a lot easier just to stay well, stay out of the medical system, which is pretty broken, mm. uh, and, um, and be in a place where they're, you know, again, fully alive and, you know, the, the most positive presence and help they can to other people in their life. Great. Now, how can people, just to start tomorrow, yeah. how can they start to live healthy and sure, better? Sure, sure, sure. The first thing to do, which is anybody can do, is to start to eat better. Mm -hmm. So a simple So no step. more McDonald's, right? Yeah, no more McDonald's. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> That's sure. That's too obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, once a year, right. twice a year, sure, we allow for the, you know, the, the treat kind of thing once in a while if they really like it. But, um, but yeah, the first thing you do is, you know, a simple thing, very simple thing, drink enough water. Mm. You know, so uh, I take half your body weight. So I'm 170, half of that is 85. So 85 ounces of water a day would be my minimum. 
you know, at half of 170 is a good right. kind of starting point. Right. So half your body weight in ounces, drink more water. Make sure it's uh, spring water or filtered water. Um, it's a simple start that anybody can do to feel better. Get processed foods, white flour, white rice, white sugar, refined salt. Get those things out of the life. We're genetically modified foods, hydrogenated oils. Get those nasty foods, the processed soy foods, and get all those things out of the diet and replace it with better things mm. like fruits, vegetables, uh, beans, peas, lentils, uh, nuts, seeds, grass-fed beef, organic chicken, organic turkey, organic eggs, locally produced as much as possible. Simple, you know, simple stuff that makes mm -hmm. a profound difference. So anybody can do that and it can make an immediate difference today. Right. Excellent. Dr. Gator, you told us all about the acupuncture, the history of the medicine. Right. Tell me a little bit about you. Oh, well, um, this is my um, uh, second career was, was working you know, as a practitioner. My first career was in music. Oh. Uh, I was a professional musician playing the piano and the organ uh, in a church and all of that for 10 years and teaching piano. And then uh, that overlapped with the start of my um, uh, practice, initially massage therapy and then nutrition, advanced uh, allotherapy or Asian body work, um, acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, and then Western, med Western uh, herbal medicine, so Chinese herbs and Western herbs. So, uh, so yeah, it's been a, a wonderful journey. Uh, I just celebrated 21 years in practice this past May. Wow. Um, and so I'm in my 20, 22nd year of practice. And I started teaching 18 years ago um, in the school where I was trained, the New York College of Health Professions. And now, uh, most of my life now, I'm into my third career, primarily as a speaker and trainer uh, for other practitioners to teach them how to do what I do particularly using diet, lifestyle, correct supplementation, and herbal medicine, so, as well as the business side. Wow, that. so what made you switch from the music career to this health? Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I had a long-standing desire to help people. And, and, you know, and using my hands has always been important. Playing the piano is one expression of that. Uh, so I wanted to help people. I wanted to use my hands. And was interested you know, in, my, in my late teens and early 20s in Eastern philosophy. And so I met two massage therapists, had my first massage. I said, wow, I could do this. I can help people and use my hands. So that was two out of three. And then in massage school, uh, I, we were, we, by law in New York, you have to study some Chinese medicine, some Asian body work. And so I was exposed to Chinese medicine, and that was it. It was an immediate kind of click where I just knew that's where I needed to be for my next phase uh, of career. And so I went more into allotherapy, advanced Asian body work, and, and acupuncture, and Chinese herbs, and really developed you know, very seriously in that area, uh, and then became very much involved in my profession. You know, I was president of the Acupuncture Society of New York for four years, and, um, and just became very active professionally. And I really felt a responsibility kind of just to, uh, to share what I've learned. Hey, this works. If you do this, it works. You know, just trying to helping other practitioners increase their level of patient care. And uh, so I started teaching uh, locally at first and then nationally in these clinical and business uh, topics. Wow. Wow. So now you lecture all over the country. Yeah, I lecture nationally on, uh, on clinical side, which is diet, lifestyle, whole food supplements. Uh, I, I've become very proficient in the use of uh, standard process whole food supplements and, uh, and many herb, Western herbal medicine, um, and, as well as, uh, so that's the clinical side of, the, of my teaching. And then I teach on the business side too, just to help practitioners use an ethical, uh, values-centered approach to growing a successful, fun, thriving, you know, cash practice. Right. Wow, excellent, excellent. Doctor, thank you for being on the show. I well, really appreciate it. So it was really good. Should we go out and get some pizza? No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. So now, Doctor, how can people find out about you and get in touch with you? Yeah, well, the main portal is my uh, website, uh, which is uh, gatacommunications.com, uh, G-A-E-T-A, communications.com. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. being on the show. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Hopefully, you'll be able to check out his website and live healthier yourself.